recently reading The Psychology of Money by Morgan Housel. And he talks about how history studies the past and then tries to map out the future. And that's ironic because so many events that make up history are the results of very unpredictable events. Like he used Hitler as an example because the odds that his parents were fighting rather than conceiving nine months before he was born are fairly likely, right? It's not that unrealistic that they could have been doing something else besides creating Hitler. And if they had been, the entire world as we know it would be different to this very day. Now, I know this isn't a psych uh, philosophy blog, but I also know that looking backward has helped us predict very poorly what was going to happen in 2023. As we approach 2024, many of us can feel things shifting in the market, right? We're feeling optimistic. Even though just two months ago, we were stoically wrapping our brain around the fact that things were gonna get way worse before they got better, and we were bracing for another, possibly more difficult year than the one we just had. We figured 2024 was gonna be tough. Then, this week, everything's different. This week, Bank of America joined UBS in predicting that there will be rate cuts in 2024, and everyone is perking right up on that news. Candace Browning, head of Bank of America's global research, was quoted saying not only that 2023 defied expectations, no shit, right? But that they expect 2024 to be the year when central banks successfully orchestrate a soft landing, end quote. That would be amazing. If we could see inflation under control, without complete economic disaster, what would it mean for real estate? We have to assess what 2023 meant for our industry and its consumers first. In my opinion, the most impactful things have been interest rates, duh, the NAR lawsuits, and inventory, locked up inventory versus new built inventory. Now, knowing those were the main factors that put this year into a tailspin over and over. Let's see how they may or may not play out in 2024, starting with interest rates. We just got bond-friendly news this morning, Thursday. PCE numbers came in showing that inflation was flat in October. I'm nervous about November though. I mentioned previously about health insurance and the new way they're gonna measure it for inflation readings, how that could mess us up. But also, and you've probably read this too, Black Friday and Cyber Monday sales hit record levels. People went hard on that retail therapy. And that might be really bad for us over here because not only did our clients spend their down payment funds, but they are fueling inflation with every splurge, every impulse purchase. But at least for the moment, based on the current inflation readings and economic reports, interest rates have a pretty good trajectory. So it's likely we're going to see both mortgage and listing activity continue to pick up as buyers get priced back in to the market. I want to share with you my experience this year of qualifying buyers and then over the next few weeks them losing their qualifications as market conditions took yet another dump. The only way to navigate this was to be in constant contact. I had to stay in very close touch with them so that even if the news wasn't great, they were hearing from me. And that way, A, they had real-time information rather than relying on the lag in news from the media. And B, they knew we were in this game together and we could just adapt our strategy. You're going to need to do the same thing with your clients as things trend better. You don't want them to be behind the curve or misinformed. I also want to make sure that we stay on guard. It's not likely going to be a free fall to happier, better times. I'm almost certain there's going to be a little bit more whipsawing and bumps in the road ahead. We can handle it. We just have to have realistic expectations. Moving on to the NAR lawsuits. There are currently two lawsuits playing out against the National Association of Realtors regarding y'all's commission. The first in Missouri was already ruled in favor of the plaintiffs, as you're probably aware. It is currently being appealed. The second is a class action lawsuit on behalf of anyone who has sold a home in the United States in the last five years. And then on top of both of those lawsuits, the Department of Justice is currently investigating NAR's policies regarding realtor commissions to see if they violate antitrust laws. So it feels like a lot, but the reality is things may not change that much at all. 
The reality is that the lawyers are probably the ones benefiting the most as they poke at your 3% commission while they're making something like 33% commission on this very case. But another reality that we should be careful not to overlook is that this news is piquing the consumer's interest. So as we discussed previously, you need to be ready to explain this without any avoidance or without any kind of anxiety. You also need to be ready to articulate and deliver on your value proposition. I can help you with this if you need it. Lastly, inventory. New construction is really killing it right now. Not only do they have inventory they're eager to move, they are also offering really low interest rates. And you might be wondering how they're doing that. It's called a forward lock. The builder, who in many of these scenarios is also the lender, buys a block of mortgages and pays up front the points to buy down the interest rate for that entire lump sum of mortgages. This costs them a lot of money, for sure, but they have the margins to cover it because like I just said, they are the builder, so they are the seller who's going to make money from the sale, and they are also the lender. So they move their inventory with a really attractive interest rate, and the buyer honestly wins. As long as there aren't any hidden fees, and for the most part, there aren't. If you're not sure or your client needs a second opinion, my team is happy to evaluate it for you and we'll point out if there's any gimmick or scam in there, or we'll point out that your client's getting a really awesome deal and they should feel good about it. Now, on the other hand, as interest rates cool off, we're likely to see sellers reach their tipping point with being trapped in a house they hate because of an interest rate they love. We could see more resales start to hit the market as sellers try to capitalize on buyer demand returning. Remember that for every point interest rates went up, 1 million buyers were priced out of the market. Every point they come back down, you get where I'm going with this. So make sure your sellers also get it and understand what this means for them and their opportunity. Then lastly, some housekeeping. Please mark your 2024 calendars for the future is female and mortgage and mimosas. The dates are below. Thank you.